Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the all-new Micro Ninjago City Market set and comparing it to the full-size Ninjago City Market set. The Micro Ninjago City Markets is set number 40706 and contains 365 pieces and was gifted to me by LEGO for review. The Micro Ninjago City sets are not sold in a typical way. They're a LEGO Insiders reward. To get them, you have to spend 2,300 LEGO Insiders points. And I'll talk about that pricing a bit at the end of this video. For now, let's take a more up-close look at the Micro set and compare all the different details of it to the full-size set. So here Here's a full look at the Micro Ninjago City markets, and this is a very interesting set to have in micro form because the other Ninjago cities are very, like, jam-packed, like, there's stuff all over the place. And while that's definitely still the case with this, a large part of this build is the sort of courtyard area in the center, and that's meant to have minifigures, like, populate it in the full-size set. So in micro scale, it does feel somewhat empty and open, despite being very accurate to the full-sized one. I will say there is something pretty cool you can do with this set and other Micro Ninjago City sets. There are Micro Ninjago figures that exist, or I guess nano figures, and two of them come in the original Ninjago City markets. So while you don't get them in the box, if you have them from other sets, you can very easily populate this area, and that does make things feel a little more alive, even if the scale isn't completely one-to-one. -one. But now let's move up a little bit closer to see the more specific details of this build. Something I like is this little stairway on the edge here, and most of the Ninjago City sets have that, where they raise up a little bit at the end. However, a cool detail about this is they tried to keep the ramps from the original set. A cheese slope is used here to keep things feeling very flat, and they use this curved piece on the other side too. Now that's because the original Ninjago City market set is entirely wheelchair accessible because Cyrus Borg comes in the set. So even though this is micro scale, they still kept that, and I think that's very impressive. On the left here, we have the little bakery, as well as the blacksmith shop at the back with the apartment above it. On the side, there's this alleyway to go between them, and the blacksmith shop is open from the back, and the apartment has a big window above it. And there's even still the balcony in the apartment, too. Here's those same buildings in the full-size version. Bakery right here, apartment up there, and blacksmith right there. There's the little alleyway on the side I was talking about, as well as one of the windows on the side of the apartment. And here's the back of the blacksmith shop, the other window and the balcony area. Here are the slope stairs that I mentioned before, by the way. The ones on this side are actual stairs, but it's a very smooth transition, right? There's not, like, a harsh difference in the levels between these. However, on the other side, you can see it's a smooth slope up, and it's also smooth in the area that loads up to the cable car. Which, yeah, as I showed you, all captured in micro scale too. In the center here, we've got a very smart piece that's used for the bridge that's basically perfect. No idea how that could be improved. As well as a little tiny boat build. One of my favorite details is the boat is actually the right size to fit under the bridge if you want, so it is able to go through. However, there is also studs to attach it on if you want to keep it in place. There's also the little market stand in the back, Camille's cosmetology shop in the back with Aaron's apartment on top of it, right? That's where that is, I believe. And then of course the cable car loading area. Here in the full size version, this is the bridge, this is the boat that can go underneath it. Micro version is a fairly good translation of that. There's this big triangular build too, which is represented by an ice cream cone in the micro set. And then here's a look at Camille's shop as well as Aaron and Sora's apartment, as I mentioned. This much smaller little booth was left out of the micro set, which isn't the end of the world, I get why that is. Like, it's a very small part of this set, but it would have been cool to see that that captured if they figured out a way to do it. Nothing else too crazy to point out on the ground level. I do like the one pink flower here. There's a few pink flowers in the waters of the original set, and it wasn't needed, but it adds some more color in. There's a little bit of lime green on this side right here too, and on the original set there is some lime green used in the foliage, however that section doesn't really have any lime green except for this little frog, and I don't believe that's meant to be the frog, so again that's not like a one-to-one -one perfect translation, but it makes the colors of the foliage in the micro scale set feel a little more varied, so I don't mind that change. It looks more interesting than just like regular green would have. Now coming up to the upper level, we have white, red, and bright orange signs on this side, as well as a white, bright green, yellow, white, and the shade of blue on this side. And most of those are one-to-one -one with the signs in the original set. This sign uses some bright orange, but obviously it's not entirely bright orange. However, I think bright orange is a good like average of these colors, and it being a jumper piece instead of just a flat tile helps to like represent the circle in the middle. Red obviously fits for this one, and white fits for this one on the corner. Then coming to the other side, yes, there is bright green and there's white. They're actually swapped around in the micro version as opposed to this set, but obviously that's a very easy fix, just swap them around the other way. There's the yellow and the white on the corner too, and then there's the blue from this sign, though the yellow's left out. I find it interesting that this set actually does do some of the multicolored signs, right, this one and this one. All of the other Micro Ninjago City sets, they just pick one of the two colors and stick with it, but I think both approaches work well enough. Anyway, here we come to what's probably my favorite section of the build, we have Laffy's Karaoke Club. They use these sparkly purple bricks, which I believe originate from like Lego Friends or Lego Disney Princess, but they fit the outside of this place perfectly. And then on top, there's the bathroom from the original set, which no, is not flushable in this one. 
However, there's this big green sign which is inverted, and I think that's such smart parts use. Because if they had it the other way around, I mean it would look fine, but it would just be flat. This though actually gives it some texture similar to the texture on the sign in the original set, so I feel like this is actually a super good way to represent this. There's also a micro build of the octopus too, as well as this red and green sign. Oh, and there's a tiny little stairway around back too to navigate. Looking at the full size set, here is Laffy's Karaoke Club. Those sparkly pieces obviously did a great job to represent this. And here's the upper level with the green sign too, and you can see how perfect that micro version really is. I will say the proportion maybe feels a little bit off on Laffy's, because Laffy's is definitely longer than it is wide, but here in the micro version, it's much wider than it is long. Certainly not the end of the world, but something I felt was worth pointing out. And now we come to the final section. So there's this long walkway with an archway over top of it, and like these trans green railings on the sides. Then in the corner of this lime green building is the Borg store. I think the shaping here is perfect. I especially love like the rounded bricks in the center to make up the windows. But then behind it, we have what could perhaps be the coolest part of this entire set. That's the elevator. Now there is an elevator in the original set to allow Cyrus Borg to get up and down, but the cool thing about this is it actually works a little bit. You could put a nano figure here if you wanted to and move them up and down. The designers very easily could have just left that locked in place, but the fact that it can actually move makes me appreciate this set even more. And then finally, there's the opposite end of the cable car station. And of course, the pathway can't like open up in the micro version of the set like it can in the big version, but there is enough room to fit the cable car on the top if you wanted to. This brick represents like the loading area on the side, and then there's a white leaf piece on top to be the tree, and that works perfectly. Coming back to the full size set, the walkway does use a different shade of trans green. This is trans bright green, while on the other set, it's just regular trans green. Again, not a big deal. I know this sounds very nitpicky, but but I'm trying to point out similarities and differences wherever I can. But yeah, it would have been cool if the micro version actually matched the colors here, but I assume the reason it didn't is just because those pieces don't exist in this color. The archway though, the micro version's perfect, and same thing with the Borg store. As I said, they captured that shape really, really well. Here's how the back of the Borg store looks, including the elevator. Finally, this is the cable car loading station with the tree at the top, and that does use like these big white leaf pieces, so having a small version of them to be a small version of the tree just makes sense. And the last thing I haven't talked about is the cable car itself. Of course, it has this giant wire build that goes all along the original set, and the cable car itself is like this rounded cube, and the micro version has this bar that runs along and the cable car connects with a clip. And again, I think that's about as good as you're gonna get it. I like how that looks. Overall, I'd say this is either the best or second best of the Micro Ninjago City sets. I'm between this and the Micro Gardens. Both of them are like really darn close to the source material. The shaping's great, the colors are great. Maybe a few minor things, like honestly, if I was designing the set, the only thing I'd change is maybe bring Laffy's up by one stud, and like keep the rest of the body the same, but just move the front up one stud and fill it up a little bit more. That I think would make the proportions match the full size set a little bit better, and like if I had the power to introduce new colors, I would change these colors around. But that's about it, it's pretty perfect otherwise. Now I will talk about the price of this set in just a moment, but before I do, let me show you how this set connects to all of the other Micro Ninjago City sets. So first, here's all four of them in the row in what's pretty much the default orientation. Original City, then Docks, then Markets, then Gardens. Which, by the way, if you want to see my full reviews of any of these, I have a full playlist either linked in the description or in the pinned comment or both. Go check that out after this video if you haven't seen, like, all the sets yet. I do full comparisons to the full-size versions just like I did in this video. And there's how that combination looks from the back, and also at a slightly higher angle. Here's my personal favorite orientation. This is what I do with my full-size cities. Markets here, Original City here. Then we have Gardens next to the Original City. Zane Memorial next to the gardens on the other side, and finally docks after that. That makes like a really cool water pathway in the center, and that way it's even on both sides and like there's buildings on all sides too. This is the straight line again though with a few things swapped around, and again a look at all that from the back. And of course there's numerous other combinations, I show some of them in my other reviews, so again check those out if you haven't yet, but I think in this video I gave you a good enough sense of how the market specifically connects to the other versions. But now to end things off, let's talk about the price. So the price on this is 2300 insiders points, which you have to spend about $350 to get that many. Of course, there are things like double VIP weekends, so you can make that a little bit cheaper, but even still, you have to spend lots of money at the LEGO store to be able to redeem this, and I just don't like the distribution of these in general. I've said that in all the reviews. I will say this one in the gardens are a much better price than the other two, but even still, it feels like asking too much. They should have just been a regular gift with purchase, probably. So it's up to you, like, what you guys want to do. In my opinion, no, it's not worth the insider's points, but if you have a lot and you don't mind spending them, or if you just, like, buy this on the aftermarket, or, like, part it out, it is a really cool build to have. Again, I think this one and the gardens are the best ones, both in terms of builds and in terms of value. And it's really cool to have the entire collection laid out. So yeah, I like this set a lot. It's just the price of distribution that's the issue. And that's kind of the case with all four. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.